Historically a woodland species, the brimstone butterfly emerged from hibernation from dense patches of evergreen ivy and bramble on the woodland edge. Deeper yellow male butterflies were usually seen first in the spring as they spent much time looking for females to mate with. The caterpillar food plant, the alder buckthorn, was still dormant without leaf. It was thought that a female brimstone reluctant to leave hibernation would be mated more easily if found and would be mated promptly having first taken to the wing in the spring. Brimstone butterflies often rested hidden under bramble leaves. As a species the brimstone overwintered as a butterfly before breeding so its evolutionary success depended on it being able to camouflage in hibernation looking like a leaf to avoid predators. In March in England there had not been many nectar-rich plants for the adults to feed on. Microclimatic temperatures above about 14 degrees Celsius allowed the brimstone to fly. If left undisturbed, the male brimstone butterfly was more flighty in March in the United Kingdom than the female. In warm sunny spring conditions, a male brimstone butterfly did not often stop in search of a female. Brimstone butterflies appeared to have had a flower colour preference to mauve, lilac or purple. In February and March, important woodland native flora providing a nectar energy source included violets and lesser celandine. By the end of March, some brimstone butterflies had dispersed from their traditional overwintering hibernating locations in woodland and were seen more in gardens where there was a greater variety of non-native nectar-rich plants. There was much old literature relating to butterfly flight times written in present tense that became out of date because of our climate that had changed. So in this video I've tried to be clear about times and dates, not just seasonal behaviour. At Chambers Farm Wood, Lincolnshire, this out-of-bounds area or magical orchid ride was observed from this side of the dead hedge. By mid-April many of the paler coloured females had been mated and they were looking for somewhere to lay eggs so were more flighty. It's Friday the 19th of April 2019 and we are here at Dalton in Lincolnshire observing the female brimstone laying eggs and we are near an ash tree surrounded by ivy and buckthorn. Perfect habitat. A brimstone butterfly could live for about 10 or 11 months, including hibernation, as an adult butterfly. But when it laid eggs, it was in time with the buckthorn budding or leafing in the spring. It was thought that chemicals released by a native buckthorn triggered the butterfly's response, so that caterpillars would emerge from eggs to be able to eat new, fresh leaves. A butterfly was not seen trying to deposit eggs while the tree was in its winter dormant phase. We observed this butterfly ovipositing between 3.45pm and 4.15pm. About a month after a male brimstone emerged from hibernation, the buckthorn started to bud and leaf. A female brimstone fluttered from twig to twig, laying an egg where a new leaf had developed or grown. When considering where to find buckthorn or a planting scheme, buckthorn needed calcareous, which was alkaline chalk and limestone geology, or pH neutral soils. 
At this location there was a buckthorn on the edge of a stream and some saplings on a bridge which a butterfly had also laid eggs on. I took some pictures of eggs that had been laid on the end of branches. When first laid the eggs were white and looked a little bit like or shaped like a skittle. Buckthorn, Ramnus cathartica leaves grew almost opposite each other and plants were either male or female with flowers and berries. The female brimstone was harassed a little bit by a passing inquisitive male orange tip butterfly. Brimstone caterpillars simply didn't feed and compose their bodies from other native trees such as hawthorn or ash for example. By growing either buckthorn or alder buckthorn in the United Kingdom ensured that this butterfly species completed sustainable life cycles. Buckthorn was native to England, Wales and throughout Europe. It was sometimes called common buckthorn but was absent from most parts of Scotland. Mature trees grew to a height of about 7 or 8 metres. On the end of a buckthorn branch, the female brimstone butterfly bended her abdomen over to deposit an egg. Buckthorn berries were poisonous to humans. It was sometimes referred to as purging buckthorn, distinguishing it from unrelated sea buckthorn. About a month after the males first emerge from hibernation, the alder buckthorn starts to come into leaf. Alder buckthorn did not grow as tall as buckthorn and had no thorns like buckthorn. When considering a planting scheme, it was noted that alder buckthorn, Frangula alnus, liked wet ground and preferred acidic soils or pH neutral. It did not like calcareous soil types, for example chalk or limestone geology. Here, a larger female brimstone butterfly was pursued by a smaller, inquisitive, male, small white butterfly. The brimstone butterfly oviposited by bending over its abdomen and releasing an egg that stuck to the underside of a leaf. She appeared to ignore the male small white, bending her abdomen away to deposit an egg. Courtship still occurred in May. The longevity of the adult butterfly suggested that the female could be mated more than once and lay a second batch of eggs. Another theory was that attention given to a female that had already been mated nearly always ended in rejection behaviour. The second instar of a brimstone larva rested camouflaged on the mid-rib of an alder buckthorn leaf. A caterpillar usually stayed clasped to a stem or the strongest part of a leaf, its midrib. A very old brimstone butterfly that was seen in June could be characterised by different tone colours in its wings, in contrast with the brimstone butterflies seen in July that were freshly emerged. I just want to quickly say something about giving nature a home, which is essentially providing the right habitat for a species one's interested in. This was a small garden habitat cage protecting a small number of brimstone larvae from predation or parasites. Brimstone larvae had a tendency to graze not far from where the eggs were originally laid. Not moving around much was thought advantageous in camouflage not to be seen by predators. Brimstone caterpillars have evolved to camouflage on older buckthorn leaves so they don't become a meal for hungry birds. A typical resting position of a final instar it won't shed its skin again before pupation. In the United Kingdom, the brimstone species life cycled quite quickly in its immature stages between about May and mid July.
Just prior to takeoff for the first time, a female brimstone quivers or shakes like a leaf. In first flight, brimstones might be engaged and harassed immediately by male green-veined white, male small white or male large white, where they will learn to hide under a leaf to avoid wing damage and to protect their life expectancy of up to 10 months and spring breeding status, compared with just 3-4 to four weeks life expectancy of the other white butterfly species mentioned. Where many butterflies had emerged in one locality, it was a natural process for male butterflies to pursue other butterflies aggressively. That energised individual butterflies to fly further afield, to find different territories and ovipositing locations in new habitat. A freshly emerged from pupa brimstone, sip nectar needed for energy to make it through hibernation and breed the following spring when nectar sources were less numerous. The brimstone butterfly had been absent from Scotland, but this was thought not to be because of how far north Scotland was, but because of the absence of the larval food plants it depended on for its life cycles, buckthorn and alder buckthorn. Here in Sweden, a similar life cycle was found at a more northerly latitude than the Shetland Islands. Out of all the UK butterfly species, the brimstone was thought to be longest lived. The male brimstone was the original butter coloured fly. The females are slightly paler. So that will overwinter, hopefully, and come out in the spring. Lovely. Yeah. Wow. Try and get a close up of the uh, female brimstone nectaring on the flower. So, what they're trying to do, oh, two of them, two of them yeah. What they try and do is nectar as much as they can on these flowers so that they, at this time of year, so that when they go into hibernation, they've got enough energy reserves to last them through to the spring. And the butterfly is shaped like a leaf, will hibernate in a position looking like a leaf. And it will help protect it from predators. So it goes. And here it goes back again. In the summer in the United Kingdom, brimstone butterflies are sexually immature until they have gone through their hibernation stage. The male white butterflies, on the other hand, are looking for a mate and have got a much shorter life expectancy and are attracted to anything paler or white. When not nectaring, it was an evolutionary advantage for a brimstone to rest out of sight under a leaf. In late summer, the female brimstone finds nectar-rich plants such as red valerian to give it energy to overwinter as an adult butterfly. Here it was harassed by a male small white butterfly looking for a partner to mate with. Trying to ignore the male's advances, the female brimstone lands back on a flower, but the male small white butterfly actually lands on her, as if to taste her with his feet. To successfully breed eight months later in April, she needs to avoid wing clashes and fights that might tatty her wings. This extra flight activity could have been seen as a waste of energy for the brimstone butterfly.
In the United Kingdom in Lincolnshire, the August bank holiday in 2019 was one of the hottest on record. After nectaring to store energy reserves for the winter, she retreats out of sight, in this case under ivy. It had been noted that a female brimstone butterfly entered hibernation later than a male brimstone butterfly.